Kurigane, let me ask you something. More complaining, is it? Come on, don't be like that. Every time I turn around, Velvet or one of the pirates is telling me to go make some delivery to some island. I can never get a break. Isn't that just a sign they think you're a dependable guy? Maybe, but I don't see them sending you off on errands. It's like they take one look at your face and decide to leave you alone. I don't have a face. Oh, right, sorry. The slip of the tongue. Maybe you just don't know how much work I do around here. It's more than you think. Anything to do with iron, I do it. Making tools, repairing things. What do you take me for? Some kind of cheeky freeloader? I don't even have cheeks. <laughs> You're too funny. But doesn't it ever annoy you to have all these kids giving you orders? I've spent my entire life thinking of nothing but forging swords. It's been centuries since I've interacted with youngsters like them. They can be a hassle, but at least it's a new hassle. Yeah, that's what I thought at first, so I went along with whatever they asked. But I've been too nice, so they keep pushing work onto me. Maybe if I hadn't been so helpful, they would have stayed out of my face like they stay out of yours. I don't have a face. That's not the point. Aren't you even listening to what I'm saying here? You need to make up your mind. You and I got on this ship alongside these people, who are putting themselves in great danger in order to live the lives of their choosing. If you don't like it, then go on and get off this ship with your tail between your legs. Yeah, except I don't have a tail right now. Push yourself too hard now, Laffy said. You hear me? I hear you. I just...
I told everyone I could find the Therians, but... I've only sent us to the wrong places. Aizen, is there any way to boost Amalok's powers? <sighs> I guess it's okay for me to tell you this. The majority of Malakim today have their consciousnesses sealed away to be used as mere tools for the exorcists. But originally, Malakim were beings who received prayers from people and in return bestowed their blessings upon nature and mankind. So you're saying that when humans pray to a Malak, the Malak receives great strength? Yes. In general, at least. Some Malakim, like me, buck the system and bring about misfortune rather than divine grace. Oh, that's unfortunate. But who would ever pray to me? Maybe you didn't lead us to any Therians, Fee, but it's not like we came back empty-handed. We found Ori Kalkum to use against Shigure, and we also learned we can hold our own against a dragon. Velvet. So where should we go next, Fee? North Gand! There's a big Earth Pulse point north of Helavis! Works for me. Aizen? We can leave whenever you want. Doesn't matter to me. And I'm all set. Let's make our way to the harbor. When I say prayers, I don't mean outright worshipping. All I'm talking about are earnest thoughts and feelings directed at you. I see. So I'm already receiving prayers then. Take a look at this. I knew this would be big. What a treasure! Scout ship departing! This design... Could it really be... Next target is north of Helavis, near the Faldi's ruins. In light of everything we know, I'd say it's highly likely we'll find a Therian there. Let's hope! Then we should make our first stop, Port Helavis. With the, uh, mischief we got into last time, getting into the city might prove difficult. Benwick, how are things in Helavis right now? That shipping guild that used to handle our mooring is pretty much toast. But for some reason, the Abbey isn't watching the port as much as they once were. 
Unfamiliar ships have been hauling in relief supplies, so if we pose as one of the transport ships, I think we can slip in. And if we divert some supplies to an unofficial channel, we might be able to secure a new mooring partner. Smuggling in relief supplies for our own disaster. Cheeky bastards, aren't we? It's what'll get us in. That much is true. It's a plan. Roger. I'll get right on it. Hey, Eleanor. Abby exorcists don't pray to their tethered Malachim, do they? You mean something besides our oaths? An oath is a magical formula that grants you power in exchange for binding you to a rule, right? Yes, though that is simplifying it a bit. When Malachim receive human prayers, they bestow their blessings upon people in nature. Aizen told me that we Malachim grow stronger when humans pray to us. Prayers and blessings? I've never heard of that. I used to think the same way as the other exorcists. Malachim are merely tools that allow us the use of arts. Yeah, that's what I figured. But he know me not is different. The exorcists all worship him. They have faith in his mighty power. And not only that, the people of this nation pray to the Empyrean for salvation, just as Artorius instructs them. Ah, I get it now. See the wheels turning, do you, kiddo? Huh? Artorius founded the Abbey within the existing Church of the Empyreans, so that he could direct the people's thoughts towards Inominat, so that even while they lionize Artorius as their savior, they are made aware of Inominat's presence behind him. Everyone starts believing in Inominat. The prayers of the entire world go to him, becoming his power. After the centuries-long decline of Empyrean worship, he becomes stronger than anyone today could imagine. The pieces do fit. Oaths, prayers, blessings, the demon blight. So much in this world is affected by matters of the heart. They hold magical power, both effective and meddlesome. We are truly going up against the rest of the entire world, aren't we? Don't look so troubled, Eleanor. I'm gonna do my best to get stronger. So believe in me. I am a Moloch, after all. Oh, Luffy said. You've become so brave so quickly. Have I? But you're still cute when you get embarrassed. Hey, why is your face so red? Huh? My face isn't red. Hmm? Hmm. Hey, Aizen. What's it feel like to get a letter? I don't feel anything, nor do I want or need to. There's no joy in receiving these things. Huh? Why not? <laughs> don't be so shocked. Look, it's just an invoice from the Turtles. What's the big deal anyway? Do you wish you'd get letters too? Yeah. But I don't have anyone to send letters to. Let alone anyone who would send me any. Luffy said, I've got a letter for you. What? Really? Who could it be from? The sender is... Bienfu? Yep, yep! You got a letter from yours truly! I figured you'd be wanting someone to send you a letter right about now, so I wrote one up for you. What do you think? You're happy, right? Oh, uh, yeah. Thanks, Bienfu. I'll even read it for you! Ahem! <clears throat> Dear Moloch Laffy Set, I hope that this letter finds you in good health and high spirits. Thankfully, I'm doing well myself, with no major changes to report. Bienfu's taking all this so seriously. It's so rare to actually see him like this. As you're aware, I've been spending my days ironing Magilu's outfits, sewing her buttons, and washing her hat and tremendously long socks. Recently, however, I made the mistake of remarking to her that she might not have been quite as slender as she once was in her younger years. She hung me upside down from the roof in the middle of the cold! I nearly became a frozen Normansicle! It was so horrible that I couldn't stop my tears from flowing down my little cheeks! Bien! Ah, <laughs> uh, there's the Bienfu we know and love. But all you wrote about in that letter was yourself, 
And you even read it out loud yourself. That's okay. Thanks, Bienfu. It feels nice to get a letter. That's so kind of you to say. I think I might cry again. <laughs> We've loaded everything bound for Helaviz. With that much freight, I doubt anyone will suspect us. Any idea who can give us cover for docking? Not anyone in particular, but recently the power and influence of the Helvies Fisherman's Guild has caught my eye. The Fisherman's Guild, huh? Let's bring them some extra relief supplies. Fuel, drink, and as for the drink... Twelve-year-old Amber Draft. The sailors of Helvies have an eye for the stuff. You heard that from Dial, I take it. He's got a sharp eye. He took a bottle in payments, but I say we turn a blind eye to it. We thought we were the best at this kind of thing, but having him around has been a real eye-opener. Okay, but tell him if he takes a second, he'll pay for it. Eye for an eye. Aye, aye. I'll keep an eye on him so that he doesn't sneak off with another bottle. The supplies are loaded. We can make for Helavis whenever you want. That was fast. If we weren't hard workers, we wouldn't be sailors. <laughs> Eleanor! <laughs> oh, what's wrong, Kamoana? She, uh, she said she had a dream about her mom. When mommy saw me, she said I looked scary. That she didn't want a scary little girl like me. <laughs> Your mother would never say that, sweetheart. But how can you be sure? Well, uh, how do I put it? I know because I know. You're just lying to make me feel better. <laughs> Aw, Kamawana, don't cry. I... <laughs> oh, this is the part I hate about little kids. I hate you, Velvet! I hate That's you! That's right. Let it all out. Stop it! Stop it! Mommy! I saw my mommy! She didn't want me! <laughs> she managed to cry herself to sleep. They're not rational creatures. Sometimes you just gotta let them cry it out. You seem used to it. I guess you could say that. Luffy usually kept himself together when he was younger. But when he was really little, he had times like this every now and then. Uh. And on that note, let's take off all we can. My liege. Dial. I leave Kamoana in your care. I'll do what I can. But kids as sweet and honest as her are harder to deal with than corrupt bureaucrats. An outlaw prince and a talking lizard are no replacement for a mother. I do hope Kamalana isn't crying anymore. Yeah. Shush. How long is it going to be before you send in another exorcist to replace Lady Teresa? With these demons clamoring at her gates, none of us feel safe anymore. You have our deepest sympathies, but we were sent here on a different mission. That's what the last exorcist who came here said before leaving for the north. What could be up there that's worth all that attention? Surely we're not all being punished by the Abbey for what happened with Medissa, are we? 
That is not the case. Now, if you'll excuse us, we have business to attend to. So the exorcists are just passing through town and heading straight north. Odd. Ever since the Calamity showed up, everything's just gone to pot, I say. Calamity? What do you mean? I mean the demon who barged in and made a mess of our fair city. She's a nasty creature of pure evil, with an arm that eats anything that gets in her way. Haven't you heard of her? The Calamity's been rampaging across the whole kingdom, not just here. Scant few have seen her and survived. Huh. You don't say. After the Calamity raised our ships and our port, the shipping guild fell apart, and our trade routes got poached by other ports. It's bad. The town relies on trade to make ends meet. People are abandoning the city, and our streets are no longer safe. Not to mention the demon blight spreading again. Just the other day, a little kid turned into a demon. Just like that. What a world. What a world. What have the exorcists been doing during all of this? Well, Lady Teresa was in charge of this region. But she came up short against the Calamity, and got a fat demotion for her troubles. Several new exorcists have been reassigned here, but once they arrive, they all traipse right off to the ruins up north. This has to be Medissa's fault. If she hadn't gone and done something so stupid... Medissa... That's enough. This isn't something for outsiders to know. You're right. Sorry. <sighs> I'm really worried about what's going to come of this town. Sounds like Helovis isn't what it used to be these days. We need to ask around and find out more about what's going on here. Agreed. Especially regarding the Abbey and those ruins. I'm also curious about this Medissa woman. The ruins part makes sense, since the Earth Pulse Point might be there. But why do you care who Medissa is? Just a hunch. Something tells me she's worth looking into. You're not gonna look into this Calamity chick? She sounds like a real terror. Yeah, I think I'll pass. I already know plenty about what makes her tick. Are you alright, Madame Eleanor? Don't let those people get you down! I'm fine. Thank you for your concern. Uh, but could you not do that thing where you blow air on me to dry my tears? Alright, I'll just pat your head then! That won't be necessary either. But really, things are in a terrible state. The town burned, the guild ruined, the abbey all but gone. It won't be a functioning port for some time. You can't fault them for being upset. They had it real good here until we came along. Those Helovisians were like spoiled children. How so? Helovis was once a tiny fishing village. The bountiful northern seas provided plenty enough fish to sustain their trade. But Flamestone gave them an easy way to get rich. Once they got a taste, they abandoned their old craft. And now they're paying the price. But I've heard that the cooling temperature has covered half the Northern Sea in ice drift, making fishing much more difficult. Uh, but the drifting ice carries tiny organisms, enriching the waters where it melts. The fish should be more plentiful than ever. I suppose you may have a point. We're ones to talk after what we did, but taking the easy path, then complaining as soon as it gets hard, that seems... Spoiled, yes. <laughs> you said it, Laffy said. I think my appetite's getting a little overindulgent, too. <laughs> That's not a bad thing. Just means you're healthy. Giant squid come to these waters in this season. Should I ask Benwick to fish some up? Yeah, and some normal octopuses, too. <laughs> The demon attacks have ground trade to a halt, but people are slowly starting to fish again. Are you a fisherman too? Aye. This town got swept up in the recent trade boom, but back when I was a young lad, this was a fishing port through and through. Ever since the shipping guild took over the docks, all of us fishermen got muscled out. Making this a commercial port has helped the town grow. 
but a lot of people weren't so happy with the guild. It's too bad everyone couldn't just work together. Once money gets involved, people change. That's true no matter what age you live in. The people know it's the ones making the money who lead the charge. But we follow anyway. It's human nature. I hope everyone changes their minds once we start rebuilding. But who knows what will happen. This calamity is... us, isn't it? Well, we've been waging war with the Abbey everywhere we go, and now we're about to take it to a new level. If we pull the next Therian off of the Earth Pulse point, It'll likely be Kamoana's village all over again. The same devastation? Ooh! I wonder if there's something worse than calamity that they can call us! This is no laughing matter. People turn into demons in part due to their own malevolence. It's not like they're entirely innocent. But if there's someone out there who's being forced to act as Inominat's mouth, like Kamoana was, isn't saving them the right thing to do? I cannot argue with that, but... You don't have to worry. I'm the one who will devour the barrier, and I'm the one who will do what needs to be done. Hey, do you mind if I ask you a few questions? Sorry, I'm busy. Try someone else. <sighs> Excuse me. My name is Eleanor, and I'm an exorcist on patrol with the Abbey. I was wondering if I could solicit your honest opinion about how this town is being run. Oh, I didn't realize there was an exorcist with you. Yes, please tell the Abbey we want Lady Teresa back. Her governance was strict, it's true, but at least we could live in safety. Now, all the exorcists run off to the Faldi's ruins and leave us here in the lurch. They value some dusty, faraway ruins over the lives of the good, hard-working citizens here. It's just wrong. We've always been cooperative with the Abbey's demands. And now this is what we get in return. I... I see. The Abbey appreciates your, uh, candor. I'll pass your comments on to my superiors. First it was the sailors, and then even a small girl caught the demon blight. I was sure it was going to start spreading through this town as well, but then, after that incident, it just went poof and disappeared. I guess I was expecting a little more after hearing how contagious it was. I wonder what really causes it. Who knows? I heard of this one village in East Gand where everyone caught it at once. It wiped out the entire town. <laughs> I hope the Abbey develops a cure quickly. I can't wait for the day where we can live without fear. Poor, poor Medisha. Are you a friend of hers? Yeah, she used to live just down the road from me. Medisha raised her daughter Diana all on her own. And then they up and murdered the girl. Murdered? By whom? The exorcists. Once Diana caught the demon blight, the damned Abbey exterminated her like a rat. How cruel. I felt just terrible, but I suppose there wasn't much else to be done with her. But Medissa, she hated the Abbey for what they'd done, so she barricaded herself inside the sanctuary. She just kept on screaming, all like, demons have feelings too. What happened after that? I wouldn't have been surprised to see her executed. But luckily, she was spared that much. An exorcist stopped the guard who was about to cut her down, said, Don't kill her. She's receptive. Receptive, huh? I think that's their way of referring to her deep faith. Before all this, she was a real devout lady. That was certainly kind of them. Medissa really cherished her daughter. Can't much blame her for blowing up like that. But the Abbey, they don't care so much about feelings. Reason is all that matters to them. They don't take kindly to people disrupting their order. <sighs> Thank you.
If you go north from Helebees, you'll come upon the Faldi's ruins, which are Abbey property. Mainly, it's used as a checkpoint for hauling ore that's extracted out of Mount Killerhouse. But between you and me, I hear the Abbey also uses it as a prison camp. A prison camp? Are they capturing demons? Heavens no! The demons they kill on sight. No, these prisoners are human criminals. Not long ago, this woman killed someone and locked herself up in the sanctuary. I hear she got hauled off to the camp. Why do you think the Abbey would use the ruins for a prison camp? Who knows? Maybe they need a place to deal out their harshest punishments. The Abbey's not known to be forgiving, after all. <laughs> uh, but these are just nasty rumors I heard. Of course, I don't believe a word of it. Don't blame me if this goes sour. I can't believe the demon blight has spread into the city now. Scary times. Well, the one who caught it was a little girl, so they were able to deal with her before anything bad happened. But the problem was that the demon girl's mother tried to hide her. That's only human nature. These are dangerous times. We dare not let our emotions control us. One person's selfishness could endanger the entire community. Oh, uh, right. Thankfully, an upstanding citizen noticed something suspicious and reported the child to the Abbey. But the mother went mad and killed him in retribution. And what makes it all the more lurid is, I heard the man she killed was a fellow she was actually thinking about marrying. The daughter had been dead set against her mother remarrying. You can taste the irony. That's... that's horrible. Eh, she had it coming. If there's anything worse than demons, it's people who can't control themselves. So, Diana was a girl turned demon who was killed by an exorcist. And her mother Medissa hated the Abbey for it. And the Abbey is using the Faldi's ruins up north as a prison camp. It's a lot like what happened to Kamawana, isn't it? It's natural for a mother to love her own child. To make that a crime. What I'm curious about is the use of the word receptive to describe Medissa. So long as there is one receptive to divine power, Therians shall be forever reborn. If our interpretation of that ancient book is right, 
It likely means she's receptive to Inominat's power. Meaning they brought Medissa to those ruins where there's an Earth Pulse point. And then they made her into a Therian. That would certainly put all the pieces together, yep. Plus, if this Therian the Abbey created already hates them, that's all the better for us. Yeah, I imagine she'd be willing to work with us. Although, it sounds almost too easy. Did I jinx it? I just jinxed it, didn't I? Probably. But we won't find out until we try. True. Let's head for the ruins. And don't worry, you totally jinxed it. The Faldi's ruins are north of Helavis. The Earth Pulse Point is to the north, too. Probably in the very same place. Helovis is different now, isn't it? Maybe, but you've changed too. True. When I first met all of you, I never could have imagined I would go on such a journey. I could barely even think then. But then Velvet let me keep this compass. And Aizen and Rokuro taught me to be myself. They certainly did. And look at Dial. He's a regular part of the Von Altia's crew now. Even Restless Bienfu and Grimoire are now part of our merry band. Yep! Hey, aren't you forgetting someone? Oh, and the Prince and his Hawk, and Korogane and Kamawana are with us. Listen, I've got more part in this tale than any of them! Hush. Whatever I'd say, you'd say it doesn't matter to you. At last you begin to understand me. Magic Hazam! <laughs> Our scout ship has returned! It worked! Scout ship setting sail. I'll finish this quickly. <laughs> You don't want to make me angry. Lavi said apologize for losing your temper. Oh, sorry. Come on, let the boy try to act tough. Achoo! Ugh. I didn't think Northgand would be this cold. But Northgan was Teresa's territory. Wouldn't you have been here with her? I think having my awareness controlled meant my senses were dulled as well. I see. But the cold doesn't seem to be bothering Aizen at all. In fact, everyone else seems comfortable here. If you shiver at these temperatures, you'll never make it on the high seas. In my youth, I practiced the blade under the blazing sun and through raging blizzards. Besides, when I turned into a demon, extreme temperatures ceased to affect me. The same thing happened to me. I used to hate winter. So that's some good luck. But what of yourself? You seem to be handling it just fine. I'm... freezing, actually. I don't know how you stand it. I loathe the cold more than anything. That's why I've armed myself with a secret weapon. I've stuck thin, yet powerful, Cuckoo brand hand warmers all over myself! I even packed them in my shoes! Really? That sounds amazing! I'm willing to share, if you act like a dove. What? Go cuckoo, like a dove! Please share your cuckoo warmers with me. Cuckoo... Hmm, you're no velvet, that's for sure. Look, no guards. 
I think it's a good thing or a bad thing? I'd say good. We can march straight in. Right, I'm ready to go. Fine, fine, I'll join your little combat crew. I'm ready for this. Be proud. You made me unleash my full power. There sure are a lot of Molochim posted here. They're probably here to protect the Therian, right? One would assume. The exorcists controlling them can't be far then. Be careful. I'm ready for this. Just wait until I pull out the good stuff. Here I come! 
Don't waste my time. They were nothing. like a sad place. Sad? In what way? Sorrow permeates this place. As if left behind by people who suffered torment and death. I guess that's a weird impression to get by just looking at some ruins, huh? I'd trust my feelings if I were you. They'll often lead you to the truth of things. Besides, what you're feeling would explain a thing or two about these ruins. It would? Rather than attempting to impress visitors with beauty and opulence, the building and its passageways were built with strength and stability in mind. And that means... They were anticipating volcanic earthquakes. And they expected that someone might turn violent in these passageways. Not a bad observation. And what would bring such savage people to these halls? Surely they weren't just passing through. Then this passage must have led to somewhere. Some room or structure deeper within. A prison for the worst criminals. Or maybe a battle arena. And that's what gave you a sense of sadness. If it was an arena, then treasure for the victors might be hidden away somewhere. Why would it be hidden? Well, those fighter types might not have been all that nice. And the people who built this place seem to have been the cautious type. Hidden treasure, huh? Where do you think... Uh... Save your speculation for another day, you two. We have a Therian to find. Right. Sorry. Uh. So, about that treasure... Aizen! Ugh. We'll talk about this later, Lafayette. All right. Don't waste my time.
This Nordal. It looks a lot like Grimoire and Bienfu, but there's something different about it that I can't quite put my finger on. I agree. Those two are positively gloomy, but this doll seems calming, yet glamorous too. Like I said, a quiet radiance. Yeah. You think so? I think it's more lethargic or absent-minded. Like I can't tell what's going on in its head. Either way, I'm a thousand times cuter than that thing. What's cute about you? People who keep their faces covered are creepy. <laughs> I don't know. There's definitely something off about it. It's charming, but a little ominous. Like I can never entirely be at ease around it, if that makes sense. You think so? Actually, I think it's cute. It reminds me of a little baby. You think this looks like a baby? I remember when my sister was about as small as that doll. She had the tiniest little hands, and she tried to grip my pinky as best she could. Really? I'd take my pinky with her fingers wrapped around it and poke her cheek, and she'd just be all smiles. I swore to myself I'd always do whatever I could to protect her. Once she got a little older and started fixing meals, lots of weird things began to happen around us. Wherever we went, she was in danger. Demons attacked us. A dragon tried to kidnap her. That's when I first realized what it was that I carried. That the cause of all my sister's pain was my blessing. My Reaper's curse. So, you left her behind and went on your search for a way to break the curse. Right. And that's when I met Eifried. It was from him that I first heard about the Nordals. He thought the stories about them were all just baseless rumors. I guess we'll never know for sure unless we gather them all. But... Hmm? What is it? I think something good will happen once they're all together. Why do you say that? Well, because we found this doll, you shared some of your past with us. That makes me kinda happy. So I think we should get the other three, so more happy stuff happens. <laughs> Hard to argue with you there.
unleashed all my power. Maybe I overdid it. I'm ready for this. We're finished here. Let's go. Can't even call that a fight.
don't get careless! Well then, let's move on. How's Medissa been acting? She's calm. It looks like letting her in on the truth worked as well as we thought it might. Good. Maybe she'll be easier to control now. Halt! Who are you? Yes! 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 Yes!
Medissa really is here. But what's this about the truth and controlling her? Take a look at this. Scout ship setting sail. It's an honor to serve as the vanguard. Everyone ready to play? Let's <laughs> go! 
Um, have you looked in a mirror lately? You really go crazy with all that paper. You think I'm the one that's going crazy? Let me unleash my full power. Thank you. 